Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In Chapter 3, we venture to the Elemental Plains as the immortal hero Tarnum hangs up his sword for a robe. The Elemental Lords, Masters of Air, Earth, Water, and Fire were free to tear the world apart now that a 10,000 year truce had come to an end. Only one with a powerful command over magic could stand a chance against them. So why did the ancestors call on a barbarian who hates magic to save us all? Alrighty folks, welcome to the third chapter of the Heroes Chronicle series, Masters of the Elements. We are going to be running this on impossible difficulty, as is the norm. So let's not waste any time and let's a go. To His Majesty King Magnus of Bracada, allow me to be blunt. The world needs your help. If the situation were not so serious, I would not ask for your help, but it is, and I am. For 10,000 years, the Elemental Lords have been bound in their own realms by a truce that was forced upon them long ago. Now they are free to do as they wish. Unfortunately, they plan to segregate the Elements that were forced together during the creation of the world. I do not need to explain to you that this will bring about the destruction of the world. I ask you to give me one of your towers so I can lead a force into the Elemental Plains themselves to strike at the Elemental Lords before they bring their chaos to this world. The golems, nagas and other creatures under your command are creatures of magic and thus the only such beings capable of surviving in the Elemental Plains. With your help, perhaps I can stop this madness. Sincerely, Lord Tarnum, the immortal hero. Masters of the Elements, Tarnum has faced down his own prejudice against magic and become a wizard if he has any chance of saving the world from the destructive Elemental Lords. Scenario 1, the trouble with magic. Tarnum must defeat the Conflict's Town to gain the knowledge he needs to confront the Elemental Lords. If Tarnum loses any battle, his cause is lost. Tarnum will be limited to level 8, but he and two of his best captains will carry over to the next scenario. So, 10 obsidian gargoyles and 1 spell power. I'm going to go with spell power. Let's do this. The ancestors swept Tarnum away to a distant tower, where sorcery was part of everyday life. He now wore the robes of a wizard, and was expected to lead these creatures of magic against the elemental lords. I was fishing on a still lake when the ancestors appeared before me, their ghostly forms hovering just above the water. Tarnum, they said in unison, this is the most important task we have ever set before you. As they magically transported me to a distant tower, they explained that when the world was created, the gods forced the elemental lords into a 10,000 year truce. 10,000 years have passed and the violent, selfish elemental lords plan to separate all the elements, thus destroying the entire world. No wonder the ancestors seemed so urgent. The elemental lords were coming to our world to destroy it. But what if I didn't wait for them? What if I took the battle to them, to the elemental plains where they reside? They certainly wouldn't expect such an assault. Unfortunately, the only way to reach the elemental plain is through a conflict town, and only one remains in the entire world. Alright, so we've got Rissa and Tarnum. Wow, that's a weird looking base. When you get like a uh, <laughs> mage guild, a, a magi tower, but no mage guild. Uh, all right. Actually, we start with 10 enchanters. Okay, so this guy is basically like Dracon, where he can upgrade monks, zealots, magi, and arc magi enchanters. Nice. An insane archmage runs out of the trees, lying screaming. It's mine, mine, you can't have my treasure. You have no idea what he's talking about, nor do you think you'll be able to avoid a fight. Hmm. Okay. Bit random, but sure. So we've got Russa, plus one Mercury a day, that's pretty useful. Can't build a city hall, so let's build, well I can't really build much of anything actually, let's build a lookout tower. Oh, this is a tiny map. Wow, this is a small map, no underground either. 
The King of Procada, Gavin Magnus, has given me the use of his troops to battle the Elemental Lords. How the ancestors arranged this, I do not know. As helpful as King Magnus seems, he also sent along a representative named Baroslar to make sure someone protects the interests of the kingdom. From the first moment we met, Baroslar has been trying to tell me what to do. He's more annoying than any person I have met, and a wizard as well. Two reasons for me to hate him. Personally, I think the twit needs to be pushed off the nearest cliff. Unfortunately, I would only end up with more problems if the third cousin of the king disappeared. You come across something half buried in the snow. It's a large pendant pulsating with magic. At first you are repulsed, but then you decide it might be worth something, magic or not. But as you bend to pick it up, the snow moves and an ice elemental rises from the ground. Soon you realise the entire ground in this area conceals nothing but a pack of these creatures. Do you wish to fight the ice elementals? No. And <laughs> not with this hero. Um, okay, so air elementals... Grab these boys. Well, there's Teal. Sitting at the table in my tent, I shake my head and chuckle as an assistant tries to explain the elemental planes to me. Uh, please listen, sir, the mage says. We have evidence to support this information, first-hand accounts of these alternate planes. But an entire world made only of fire? That's not possible, I say. Sir, in the elemental planes, the rules of our world do not apply. In the elemental planes, you can walk on clouds, and entire landscapes can be made only of fire. That's why no one has dared take an army into these lands. Well, possible or not, I will be the first, I say boldly. I may have to use magic, but I can still fight like a true barbarian. There is no reason to sit around and wait for these elemental lords to come to me. I'll take the battle to them and end it before they get the chance to harm this world. The elemental lord of air enslaved this group of gremlins long ago. They cheer as you walk among them, cutting the ball and chains attached to their ankles. As one, the gremlins throw down their saws and pick up their former shackles. As exciting as working at the sawmill was, one of them says, I think we'd rather be fighting the elemental lords. Would you mind if we came along too? Sure. Crack on. I'm guessing these guys are going to do exactly the same. You sit down among the gremlin miners and tell them of your fight against the elemental lords and of your need for troops. Their leader nods and says, the elemental lords have no place in this world anymore, and if they really intend on destroying it just to spite everyone, well, we're not just going to let them. Will you accept our help? Yes, yes I will. Nice big army already. No grammars. I think we can end this pretty damn quick, actually, this mission. These guys got very little. Against enchanters? Yeah, they'd stand no chance. Lord Tarnum, Baroslar, my assistant, addressed me. I would suggest we get rid of those pesky air elementals and take that gold mine. You do know how expensive those enchanters are, don't you? I have to sit on my hand to keep from punching the little man's nose in. <laughs> uh, I love the rivalry that's already starting. The air lord knew you would come for this gold mortal. Our superiority is obvious, so surrender now or die. Um, I think not. Fool of a took. Whoops. That was a foolish mistake.
I have been told that if I plan to fight the elemental lords, I must use magic. No wonder the ancestors brought me to this tower, the home of creatures born with magic in their blood. Magic is all around me, making the little hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Even after all these years apart from my culture, I am still a barbarian deep inside. I distrust magic and anyone who uses it. Give me a sword, any weapon, and let me face my enemy in combat. One of the natives of this region approaches your army. You can barely see his face from behind the bundles of clothing he wears to fight off the chill. Sir, I hear you are the only one who plans to battle the Elemental Lords. Seems to me you're crazy to take on such a task, but then who am I to question you? Anyway, I wanted to warn you about this valley is often visited by air elementals, and you may never see them until they attack. Beware. The wind kicks up, blasting down from the mountainside, practically throwing you out of your saddle. Sensing this is no ordinary breeze, you order your troops to prepare for combat, and just as you suspected, lots of air elementals swoop down out of the sky to attack. Beautiful. Gargoyles. If they were up to me, I wouldn't even have them in my army. These unnatural freaks make my skin crawl. They aren't truly alive, but stone enchanted with life. Their eyes don't blink, they don't eat or breathe, yet they follow the orders and stay close to their masters like dogs. I was half expecting them to join me, actually. Uh, let's grab a parrot pet, why not? With my army, we should be able to just smash the enemy really quickly. I just don't see them being able to actually stop us. So far, we have underestimated you, but we've figured out how to tell if you're coming. You'll regret the day you made us your enemy. Oh, will I now? <laughs> I think not, sir. Oh, so this doesn't lead to them, okay. This is our Mercury. Go find your own. The Elemental Lords are far more powerful than you will ever be. It's wiser to join them than side with some upstart fool. The lab will be necessary for your victory, so you grudgingly order your troops to attack. Wow. Uh, definitely air magic. So their base is... Okay, so we've got to kind of go through all of this. Okay, fair enough. To be fair, it might be worth us picking up all the plus one defense and attack and all that gubbins anyway. Barisla has been droning on for the better part of an hour about the intricacies of golem construction, while I've been daydreaming of a golem falling on top of the scrawny wizard, crushing the life out of him. Then Barisla stopped talking. I turned towards him. He was waiting for something. Must have asked a question. Oh, what? I said around a yawn. I said, Barislaw dragged out the words, it would be beneficial to hire one of those lazy heroes from the tavern to visit the gremlin workshops, the power pets, and other creature dwellings once a week. They could collect the taxes from the water wheel and windmill as well. Sure, sounds like a good idea, I said. I quickly pointed to our right and said, look, a rabbit. Baroslar looked and then frowned as he realised there wasn't a rabbit. 
Uh, oh, these two are going to be quite funny, I think, throughout this campaign. Looking forward to their shenanigans. Oh, I was really hoping for XP this time around, actually. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's see what's in here. Basic wisdom. Already got that. I'm just going to save my money, actually. A piece of wise advice, Barrett Slobigan. He was always willing to let you know the importance of his own words. Visit those mage towers weekly to recruit the mages as they graduate. You could train them to become enchanters, you know. Yes, I know, I said. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, I not much money. Which is a little problem. This morning I left while it was still dark to explore the immediate area. Perhaps it was foolish, but dealing with all this magic makes my head feel like it's been split open with an axe. Just the chance to ride alone in the wild made me feel better. Then I was attacked. The air elementals came out of nowhere and picked me from my horse. I tried to use my staff on them, but it was useless, while the elementals were completely surrounded by their element, air. They carried me up above the clouds themselves, taunting me all the way, and then they let me go. It seemed like I fell for an eternity, straight towards the solid ground below. I tried to prepare myself for the pain, and then something took hold of me from behind. At first I thought it was the elementals, back to taunt me again, but when I turned around, I saw one of my assistants, the Gargoyle Master. The small man was flying through the air with the help of magic, and he set me down without injury. I lowered my head, shamed that I had to be saved by magic. I have to say, I've been genuinely impressed by just how much text and lore there is in the Chronicles series. Again, the air elementals appear out of nowhere, swooping out of the sky. They're intent on your destruction, and as you draw your weapon, you wonder how many of these creatures the Air Lord can send at you before he gives up. More this time. Yeah, not bad trade. Do I want leadership? Leadership actually would be quite good. I need earth magic, wouldn't mind water. But yeah, leadership's good actually. I'm gonna take that. I need to stop wasting money actually. I need to upgrade these uh mages to enchanters. Two grand. We have learned a lot from the Elemental Lords over the years, and there is much more knowledge to be gained. We can't let you proceed with this foolish plan to attack our teachers. Surrender to us now, or we'll be forced to attack. This is going to be a bit of a painful fight. Woof. Lord Tarnum, those enchanters of yours are very expensive. It was my newly appointed treasurer, the man who saved my life from the air elementals. I promoted the Gargoyle Master as a ward for keeping quiet about the humiliating incident. I know they are powerful magicians, the treasurer said, but they are very expensive. Find the money somehow, I said. There is one way. When we have an abundance of a resource, we could exchange it at the marketplace for gold or any other resource. 
the small man said. Um, we definitely need to upgrade these guys. 1400 XP. We probably would get that from this fight, actually. Yeah, that's the best spell for this fight. This guy not got any um, spells or something. This gold mine appears to have been inactive for centuries, and you can see why. Standing outside, some gold golems stand guard. Although these golems are mindless, they are the perfect guards. They never sleep, and they never take breaks. Lovely. I think we are pretty much done for this mission now. My lord, said the wrinkled assistant as he approached, you summoned me. I've come to realise wizards have more assistance than the hairs on their sunken chests. I have a theory. For every problem that faces them, from difficult magic formulas to ill-fitting boots, a wizard hires a new assistant to solve it. Hence the most powerful wizard is the only one who never lifts a finger as a retinue of apprentices capable of popularising a city bustles around him. Which one are you? I said. Ponific, the golem master. Oh yeah, I was wondering, as long as I have to have those golems in my army, can you do something to make them breathe? Whatever would you want them to do that for, Lord? I don't like them. Yeah, they're strong, but they're so creepy, like walking corpses. Do you like corpses, Ponificrate? I said sharply. It's Ponific, Lord, the golem master said. Oh, and no, I don't particularly like corpses. So can you do anything? I don't think so, Lord. But golems are quite useful as they are. They will do whatever you want them to do whenever you tell them to do it. Yeah, prolific. Pornific, Lord. Yeah, but they don't do everything you ask them to do. I ordered one to breathe, but its head cracked open trying to get its small mind around that one, I said. Lord, that's quite impossible, Pornific said, annoyed and confused at the same time. Fine, forget the breathing, I said. Grinning as I wondered how far this wizard could be pushed. Can you make them blink? <laughs> I do enjoy the um, bringing these characters to life more than I have done in the previous Heroes Chronicles series. I think it's just because of how much these um, wizards and barbarians seem to despise each other. Um, adds for some very interesting character moments. Curse magic users and all of their kin. Last night, one of my supply wagons was attacked. A lone wizard approached the guards. Of course, they didn't expect trouble from a single old man, but this wizard summoned some air elementals who quickly sent my men fleeing for their lives. Several were killed, and my gold was gone. I mean, to be fair, I'm not too concerned about gold right now. I mean, this is uh, we're pretty much pretty close to ending this mission now, so just need to find their base. And uh, there we go. He's just leading me to it. Thank you very much. Oh, we're not, <laughs> as the case may be. Must be up here, right on the top, Lovely Jovler. You can see the glint of gold from where you stand, and this obviously is the fabled Endless Purse of Gold. Unfortunately, you can also see the glint of gold from some gold golems. The moment your hand touches the bag, they'll activate and you'll have to fight them. Are you really interested in tangling with a pack of gold golems? Yes. Let's take this final fight. You know, I really do appreciate the storm elementals in the uh, in the towers. That is pretty cool. Jeez. Okay. Well, this is going to be a very very short fight. That's for sure. 
if not a bit easy, but there we go, it is what it is. And we're really well set up for future missions as well. Teal has been vanquished. Congratulations, all your enemies have been defeated. And victory is yours. Master of Elements 1. Alright, Scenario 2, Walking on Clouds. Tarna must defeat the armies of the Lord of Air. Tarnum and all heroes will be limited to level 12. Tarnum and the two best captives will transfer to the next scenario with all of their skills, spells and experience. The Orb of Firmament will transfer to the rest of the scenarios as well. Cool, good to know. I'm going to start with the Lookout Tower. Good to go. Why wait for the Elemental Lords to come to him? That's what Tarnum must have been thinking when he decided to take the battle to the Elemental Plains. Even though he looked like a wizard, he still had the heart of a barbarian. Baroslav found a book in the Conflict's library that reveals the way to the elemental plane of air. So we've come to this impossibly tall mountain range to find the gateway to the clouds. We've also brought some items with us from the Conflux that will allow us to pass into the Air Lord's land to defeat him. However, the thought of walking on the clouds still frightens me. What if these wizards are wrong? What if we fall through? Can you imagine? That would be a very short campaign if that was the case. Hey guys, we made it. Oh shit. Alright, let's transfer the troops. Wow, that's uh... I'll take those two spells. <laughs> Actually, the two spells I would have wanted as well. We protect this orbit for our master, the Lord of Air. No one else shall have it. I beg to differ. Excellent find, Lord. These gloves will help your horses move farther on the snowy terrain, Hemeros says as you pull the equestrian's gloves from the snow. We protect this sawmill for our master, the Lord of Air. No one else shall have it. In a recent letter, King Magnus stated his concern that we might not be able to contact him after we pass into the elemental plane of air, or that we might not be able to come back. He suggested I remain here and wait for the elemental lords, but I refused. The elemental lords won't be expecting an attack, which is exactly why I'm doing it. Why give them time to build the army they want? Unfortunately, Magnus hasn't been able to get the genie to join me as I requested. As creatures of the plane of air, they can't, or won't, take part in any aggression against the Air Lord. So much for extra troops. I'll have to make do with what I have. How unfortunate. I do love me some genies. Especially the Master Boys and cast spells. I feel like with this kind of army... Eh, I'll, I'll carry on with money, I suppose. Probably is the sensible choice. Great battle, Lord Tarnum, Baroslar says, stepping out from the trees. Leave it up to that weasel to wait until after the fight to step forward. King Magnus has chosen his leader well. However, you should visit that Marletto Tower to learn what they have to offer. Every little bit counts, eh? Yes, indeed. Thank you for that useless piece of advice. You little weasel. <laughs> Ooh, Tome of Air magic now. That is worth picking up. Baroslar left today to search for the gateway to the clouds. He decided his magical talent would best be used as a scout. Plus, he wants the freedom to study the elemental planes without interruption. I think he left because he realised I was close to removing his head from his body. As I saw him ride away, I smiled. Now, if I could just rid my army of the rest of the wizards. <laughs> Unfortunately, you wouldn't be left with much of an army. <laughs> Alas. Wizards be good. Might actually be worth just picking this up, actually, just the extra knowledge. Hmm. 
Uh, we should probably pick that up as well. Keep Rissa here for now. That's definitely going to be a fight. So no, I'm going to get that for free. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll link the armies. Have the lean to in the Golem Workshop. I've been receiving letters all week from the wizards and mages under my command, thanking me for building a mage's guild. It's almost embarrassing the way they go on. The miller works for us now. Do they? Do they really? This gold belongs to our master, the Lord of Air. No one else shall have it. Oh, I didn't even see that. Freebie. It had been so long since I last heard from Baroslar, I was beginning to wonder if he might be dead. No such luck. He's not only alive and well, but he's discovered another tower. It's old and a little run down, but many of the buildings are still intact. He found the creatures that dwell there to be rude and stubborn. They wouldn't join him, nor did they have any interest in battling the Air Lord. They can't all be bad if they didn't like Baroslar. According to Baroslar's crudely drawn map, the tower is far to the east and slightly north of my own town. I'm going to read all these little snippets. They all basically say the same. <laughs> you shan't have this crystal, you shan't have these gems. Floating around the Tome of Air Magic are lots of genies and hordes of storm elementals. One of your men stops to count the exact number and discovers there are at least 30 genies and 80 storm elementals. It may be wise to ensure you have enough troops to take on a force such as this. That tome must be very valuable. Oh, it is. Dimdor, sign me up. I'm going to need to turn these mages into uh, enchanters before we take that fight. How much would that cost? Doesn't even tell me. I have a lot more than three grand, that's for sure. Take water magic. Just need earth magic and I'm golden. I'm not going to waste time on that one for now. Alright, let's roll with this. Let's do attack. Okay, now we can head towards the capital. None can take the Tome of Magic, it is ours. Is it now? That is a fair amount of units, to be fair. Yeah, this fight ain't free. That, that one.
beautiful. That should make this mission considerably easier. I have decided that the ancestors are punishing me. They placed me with these wizards, made me one of them to completely humiliate me. Today I made an attempt to befriend these learned men. I stripped to the waist, stood in the nearest snowbank, and then I challenged every man in the camp to wrestle. Not one accepted. Come on, I shouted. You, you, and you, all of you can take me on at once. Nothing. They just stared at me like I was insane. No wonder they need their spells. They're afraid to do anything that requires a little sweat. And isn't it ironic that I, the barbarian king who slaughtered thousands of magic users, now must master magic himself, or the world will perish? The ancestors must be laughing at me. I know I would be if I were in their shoes. Man, Tarnum really isn't having a good time with these guys, is he? Oy, oy, oy. Can you imagine being a barbarian being forced to use spells? You'd be like, oh... Not a happy bunny, that's for sure. I'm just using Rissa to scout for the most part. I do need to move myself up to a capital just for the extra gold income. And fly is probably quite useful, might as well use it. Don't really want to use two mages, but it is what it is. Oh, max level already. Ooh, mysticism is not ideal. Kind of wish that was earth magic or logistics or pathfinding. Really anything other than mysticism, but whatevs. How wonderful, Hemeros says. A school of magic, I can't believe our luck. You really ought to increase either your knowledge or your spell power there. It's only a 1,000 gold and you could use the extra boost. Maybe have any other heroes visit here as well. Thank you, Hemeros. I could use the extra boost, could I? Funny, I didn't see you uh, putting yourself forward when I uh, challenged everyone to a wrestling match, you little bitch. <laughs> this takes me back to base. So that's not where I want to go. The school is closed to the likes of you. We have been instructed to decimate anyone who attempts to pass here. Prepare to be sacrificed to the Lord of Air. At least there's loads of money. Although it takes many years to master a weapon, using one is relatively natural. Anyone can pick up an axe and swing it, it's a tool. But I wonder who came up with the complex spells that make up magic. No wonder most of these wizards have such scrawny bodies. Everything is about formulas, equations and complicated actions, all to draw the desired result. It takes forever to memorise a simple spell. Whoever came up with it must have been a madman. Finally build a capital. This is probably where I need to go. This is it, the elemental plane of air. Before stepping from the monolith, you drop your staff into the billowing white clouds. The shaft floats as if on water, refusing to settle into the clouds. Amazing. Cautiously, you take your first step and feel something like solid ground beneath your feet, even though you know there is none. You don't think you can ever get used to this. Okay, I probably do want to get Rissa back up here, actually. I want to see what that um, uh, thing has to offer. I also understand there's a tower here. It's probably worth picking up.
Oh, there we go. Lightning bolt. Nice. Okay, yeah, this was worth picking up for sure. Much level three. I just need crystal. Okay. Ah, there's the herb of ferment. Nice. We'll grab our mana back. Ah, hello. Have a look out tower as well. Today, some of my assistants summoned me to a frozen pond near a grove of trees. The wizards broke a hole in the ice with their staves and removed the shards of ice with their bare hands. When the preparations were finished, everyone stood in a circle around the hole. This is called a seeing pool, Amaros said. Any still water can be used to create it. What does it do? I asked. With it, we can find a person, even over great distances. Hemeros explained that they were going to try to find Barislar. I wasn't sure what to expect, so when the water began to glow an eerie blue, I took a step away from the hole. Hemeros grinned, amused at my apparent fear. Suddenly, the surface of the water became shiny and flat, like a mirror, and then a single figure appeared. I bent over to look closer. It was Barislar, walking upon what looked like a field of white clouds. The plane of air, perhaps. He still lives, Hemeros said. The other wizards applauded. Well, I bet uh, Tarnum is just ecstatic at the fact that he's still alive. <laughs> oh. Alright, let's see if we can't grab ourselves some crystal. Destroy undead air shields. Not bad. I ordered Hemeros to peer into the seeing pool again, but this time to do something useful. These wizards just don't understand strategy, or else they would have told me before that they had the power to find people. Find the Lord of Air and his conflux, Hemeroid, I ordered. Uh, Lord, I'm afraid you've mispronouncing my name. It's supposed to be Hemeros, the mage instructor said. Finally, the man found his courage. Whatever. Just find the Air Lord. Later, Hemeros reported that the Lord of Air couldn't be found, even though they were able to locate his conflux. The troops within were preparing for war. He saw sprites, air elementals and storm elementals. Lots of them. It seemed easy for you to find Baraslar. Why can't you find our enemy? I asked. If he were dead, the spell wouldn't work. But that isn't likely in this case. I believe the elemental lords are immortal although that is not my strongest subject. So what does it mean? It could mean several things, Lord. I have consulted with the others, and we've decided that perhaps the Lord of Air is so powerful that he can hide himself from the seeing pool. So basically what you're telling me is you don't know. Wizards hate to admit their ignorance. Yes, Lord. I'm actually starting to think that um, Tarnum hates Hemeros even more than he hates Baroslar. <laughs> Just a, just a vibe I'm starting to get. Okay, you probably should get this crystal actually. School is closed. Match level four, what have we got? Oh yeah, boy, chain lightning, now we're talking. Legit one of the best spells. Can we get five? Oh, we can, and a library. I think we should do that. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'd love to get Dim Door as an actual spell. Ah, Sulfur next is the problem. Okay. How much could I buy Sulfur? I could buy a fair amount of it, actually. Yeah, are elemental, ironically. Okay, fine. And then just a library, I think, just to finish it off. So I need five of everything. Sofa? Where am I not getting sofa? Ah, it's there. Cool. Might as well pick that up on the way then. A few days ago, I sent a scout to investigate some rumours I've been hearing from the locals. This morning, the man returned. I clenched my fists at his report of sprites being held in cages, enslaved by the Lord of Air. The Air Lord holds his children hostage, forcing the adults to fight for his cause, work in his minds, and other such horrors. Sprites may be magical creatures, but they are slaves, and I'm familiar with that helpless feeling that your life is not your own. Nothing is more crippling than being the subject of the whims of a cruel master. Those are the memories that drove me to become the maniac I used to be. Perhaps I went too far, but I still like to think that my cause was just. We're going to free those sprites, I promised. Alright, let's grab a uh, library. Wow, okay, that really didn't work. Interesting. Well, magic mirror is alright, I suppose. Greatest spell, but it'll do. Let's fly over here. Oh, I wanted Rissa to be through there as well, actually. Five genies approach you under a white banner. Lord Tarnum, they address you with a deep bow. We would like to join your army. Some of my people are still too afraid of the Air Lord to disobey him, but if you could free them, I'm sure they would join your battle against the Elemental Lords. Hails, yeah. You're not sure where Barislar came from, but suddenly he's standing next to your horse. Your hand goes quickly to your side, but there is no sword to be drawn. Lord Tarnum, this way, Barislar says with a cocky grin. He saw your startled reaction and enjoyed it. What do you want? The gateway to the clouds is along the trail to the north. I've stepped through and saw the elemental plane of air with my own eyes. Remarkable! But some storm elementals chased me back here a couple of days ago, and I've been waiting for you here ever since. Once again, Barislar joins your forces, but he and some of the other wizards seem preoccupied with his observations from the plane of air. At least they'll leave me alone for a while. Yeah, air magic. How oh, very disappointing. <laughs> I was hoping for like logistics or pathfinding, something actually useful. One of the genies who recently joined your side explains that you might even be able to convince some of the air elementals to join you. They're brutish creatures, not too bright, and will jump at the chance to do battle, no matter who the opponent. We found the place where the sprite children are being held. Barislar was the one who discovered the holding pens and sent word to me. I immediately dispatched a large contingent to free the children and bring them to my tower until we can deal with the Air Lord and free their parents. Alright, 
it's probably south, I reckon. Wow. It's actually, wow. 250 to 490. Oh my boys, that's a problem. That's a very real problem. Almost a legion of the wow. That's kind of ridiculous. What the hell? Yeah, I think not. Okay, we might actually need to uh, start building up some forces, I think. That was a lot of enemies. Or troops. I figured we'd just steamroll, but I'm thinking maybe we won't. <laughs> Hell no. Okay, these guys have got access to some crazy spells. I think it's just taking the conflux town that I need to do, really. Or is it defeat all enemies, perhaps? Okay, well, the base definitely isn't there, so... I'm also running low on mana, which is a problem. the town. Some of the sprites have learned that their children are now safe, so they deserted from the Air Lord's army. They desperately wanted to reunite with their children, so I wasn't able to convince them to join me. I did, however, get a little information out of them before they flew away. Unfortunately, the Lord of Air has fled the elemental plane of air. I regret that I'm not going to get the chance to face him. When asked where he went, the sprites simply shrugged. They didn't know why, but they did know that he left most of his forces behind to guard his realm until he returned. It's going to be a painful fight. Ouch. We get from here. Oh, this is very expensive. Uh, is it this one we get earth magic? Yeah, I'm not worried about fire. I'll grab my mana back though. Okay, now he's heading back towards us. is to have enough troops to actually beat this guy. Or is he just going to keep going back and forth, I wonder? Nope, he's definitely making his way to our base. Okay, cool.
<laughs> Shoot. Well, my base training might not be the worst thing in the world for us. These air elementals would certainly be useful, and it does buy time. What's going to be doing here? Basically the same spells as we had before. I think we do need to go back now and deal with this guy, so... The only really concern is just how many troops he has. Which is a significant amount. That would be all my money though, that's the only problem with that. Give you a lot of money and gems, actually. And I've got no money. <laughs> All right, can I get one more? Yes, nice. I think that's enough to do.
I want to use all my mana before we fight. It's actually going to be a tough fight, I think. Okay, well, without spells, we get slapped. Oof. Oh, he has more attack and defense than me. Oof. Okay, we should put air shield on for ourselves, I think, as well. Okay, yeah, I think we're golden. Man, lightning strike hits like a truck even with air shield. Mainly because the uh, air elementals take double damage from lightning spells, so it kind of negates the air shield. Killing about 50 a crack. Nice. About 40 per strike. Either way, pretty good. Okay, well he's out of mana now, so that's great. And that, my friend, should be all she wrote. GG's. Congratulations, all your enemies have been defeated and victory is yours.